is don't turn your back on them. Mm -hmm. Things were getting a bit tough in our church and around where we were. I think there was a time when the devil visited many churches around Germany uh, and Brother Hill. And I met regularly with him and we shared, we prayed, and he counseled, he advised, he came to preach and support. And for me, that means a lot. So today, we're back on our feet, literally. We are growing back from the Praise God. And I have to say, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for those friends who stick with you when things are not going the right way. Praise the Lord. So thank you, Pastor Joe. And thank you, Lizzie. I mean, the last time we had coffee was just close by me in Burton. Would you believe that? When he traveled to go see his his daughter and his <laughs> grandchildren. It's so over because I live in Britain and we have always coffee. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Just you mention, just pastor. mention it. It's Starbucks. Praise the Lord. Even have, have, just mention it's Starbucks if anybody wants to take oh, me. Oh, yeah, Starbucks, by the way. No cost at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> he introduced me to Starbucks. I was a Costa guy, but then, yeah, I was conversing now. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, I'm not going to be spending time sharing my opinion with you. I want to share the word of God. I think it's easy for us to come to church and have our own interpretation of what the scripture should be and how God should be working in our life. But first, I want to say congratulations for making it to church this morning. One of the things I found a bit sad is the fact that many people today don't see the value of coming to church physically and meeting face to face. Mm. I love the fact that we can meet online. Mm. It's a great thing, it's a great tool, and I don't think the church should turn, we should turn our, we shouldn't turn our back to the online presence because it's important. Today is about AI and you can't just ignore that. It's a platform. We should be using it, but, but, do not forsake the gathering of each other. So thank you for making it to church this morning. You did the right thing. You're in the right place. This is God's will for you. This is his desire for you to be in his presence and in his house. Never forsake the assembly of each other. I have a word this morning, and I hope it's going to bless one or two of you. As you know, the word of God always comes to encourage, mm -hmm. to give warning, mm -hmm. to give direction, and also to prepare us for what God has in store for our life. So if you're sitting here this morning, fasten your seatbelt. Be ready. Sometimes I'm going to raise my voice. I'm not shouting at you. <laughs> I get excited sometimes by the things I'm sharing, right? <laughs> But I hope we're going to all be in the same spirit when we leave this place in power, strengthened, encouraged, directed through the word of God. Mm -hmm. If you have your Bible, I encourage you to always have your Bible. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can read with me in Exodus chapter 50, 15. We're going to read verses 22 to 27. If I have to give a title to my message, I would say, The God of the Wilderness. Mm -hmm. Jesus. There is something about the wilderness. If you read the Bible, you discover God in a way you would never discover. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness. Elijah did the same. Moses did exactly the same twice. Standing alone in the burning heat in that dry and parched land where there is nothing, complete emptiness, really hot on the day and very cold at night. I had the privilege to travel to Mauritania not long ago. And I could see the desert, the Sahara Desert, which is one of the largest deserts in the world. And I was amazed when I saw a cattle of a herd of camels for the first time. 
They were just running in that place. But they seem to know where they're going. It's a vast emptiness. There's absolutely nothing, just dryness. But there is a beauty behind it. <coughs> and one thing that strikes you when you're in that place is the heat. Mm. It's extremely hot. But then when it turns dark at night, it becomes so cold. You have both extremes on the same day. It's not a place you would like or enjoy to spend time with your loved ones, I can tell you that. But there is something about wilderness that appeals in the Bible. God spoke to Moses and the children of Israel, and he purposely led them there. Let's find out why. Let's find out why. I was fascinated. He really caught my attention. Let's read together. <coughs> Exodus 15. Then Moses led Israel through the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. Then the Lord issued ruling and instruction for them, and put them into the test. He said, If you listen carefully to the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his command and keep all his decrees, I will bring you on it. I will not bring you any of the disease I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they come there near the water. I found it fascinating to see how the power of God work. God drove them out of Egypt and then he let them wander purposely without giving them any water whatsoever to the point where imagine the mothers, the children grumbling, asking, but I'm not thirsty. This saw God's power. How he, he destroyed the whole empire of Egypt just to redeem them from slavery. They saw his hand. And now, what they call freedom is then to be not really something to enjoy. Wandering around. No direction whatsoever. No map. And first, he led them first on purpose. And the Bible said, He tested them. Why did he do that? Mm. And that's the question. You see, there is something about God that we really don't understand most of the time. When He sets you free, He brings you to a place where He wants to reveal Himself to you. Mm. You see, Freedom does not mean independence. No, it's never been God's plan for you to be independent. It's to depend on Him. Mm -hmm. He always wanted to take care of you. He always wanted to lead you. He always wanted you to trust in Him. Mm -hmm. He is your Father. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing Israel did not know. He let them first on purpose to show them, I am the God who can, in the midst of this, bring you water. In that dry, parched land, I can give you water. Isaiah 48, verses 20. And he says, He led them in the desert, and He gave them water. He split the rock, and the water gushed. I can provide for your need. 
disease. I can heal you from your disease. If only you can lift up your head and not look around you. It's all dry around you. But I want to prove to you who I am. Because you know what? In the midst of their freedom, they did not know God. They did not know Him. They were grumbling. They were complaining. They did not know Him. And I'm going to qualify that in a minute. I'm going to show you even more. A few verses. Why? God did that. Second thing that is quite remarkable. Let's read. Let's read in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Moses saw the why God purposely drove his people in the wilderness. I want to tell you this morning, no matter what you're going through, when the desert you're going through, you're going to come out of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're going to come out of it stronger than ever. Amen. And God will reveal himself to you in a way that will change your life. It will give bone and structure. It will give foundation to your faith. You see, the head, the head of a building is always determined by the death of its foundation. Amen. And the death of your foundation would command the authority and the strength of your Christian life. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those who take the word of God seriously? Hallelujah. Do you really take the word of God seriously? Mm -hmm. yes. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness this 40 years. For what? To humble and test you in order to know what's in your heart. What do you have inside of you? When it get tough, it's not time to turn back. He sent you to the dry land. He let you go through those things purposely so you can stop looking left and right and turn your eyes to him. Amen. When you reach that point when you realize there's no friends, no friend around you that can help you, Amen. then you qualify for the miracle Amen. that is coming your way. If only you can outborn yourself. If only you realize that. In the midst of what you're going through, God has a plan yes. to transform you, yes. to change you. Amen. And that comes through the revelation of sometimes. Sometimes these two things happen. Sometimes He shows you how dry you are. You think you're good. He will show you, you know, you know, you're not as good as you think. As somebody was saying, you know, sometimes you start digging, searching inside of you. You want to take some days to fast and pray because you think maybe you have one devil in your life, one addiction that is bothering you. But at the end of it, you realize you have more than one. You have ten devils. <laughs> You're worse than you think you are. And so can God has to help on you. He has to mold you, to break you before he make of you what he called you to become. And I pray this morning that God will be fulfilling your life. Hallelujah. Amen. But sometimes you have to go through that dryness. So you can't even sing, you can't even pray when you sit down in the morning trying to read the Bible. You, you, you can't. You, you just fall asleep. It's all dry around you. You feel overwhelmed by your circumstances. And you know it. You feel dry inside. But he's the God who can split the rock and let water gush over Amen. you and restore you. Time of refreshment. In the book of Acts chapter 9, when Peter was saying, repent and be converted. So a time of refreshment may come. A time of refreshment is always preceded by a time of repentance. A time when you humble yourself before him. So he said in the book of Deuteronomy, 
you have to do. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his command. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, and then feeding you. He caused you to hunger, and then stop there, and then feeding you, because he will feed you, because that's what a good father does. He feeds his children. He takes care of them. Amen. You know how I realize God, what God doesn't like, if I have to say something, is not to be trusted. God loves to be believed. Have you noticed that? Everywhere in the Bible, he says, if you believe, if you believe, he likes to be trusted. He loves to be believed. And he hurts his heart when we don't trust him. That's the thing that hurts God the most. When you don't believe, when you don't trust him. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen. This passage led me straight to what happened to Jesus in the wilderness. <coughs> Jesus was standing in that dry, empty, burning place for 40 days. And the devil came and tempted him. Jesus refused to feed himself. He refused to do it. And I was wondering why. The devil came to tempt him. What was he tempting him for? If you are the son of God. In other words, prove me who you are. Show me your skill. Show me your power. Show me your talent. Show me what you are able to. Jesus never relied on his ability. You see, that was a test. He refused to do that. You know why? And he quoted that scripture. Because where you are in that place, you are in a place where you depend completely on him. Amen. That's what will make you a son of God. Hallelujah. As the scripture we read, those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of the Most High. Only those who are led by Him. Jesus refused. He refused to use His divine power and authority to do anything. Could He have done it? Yes. But He refused. He put purposely Himself in a position where He said, Father, feed me. Father, feed me. And at the end, the Bible said, the angel came and ministered to him and fed him. He refused to feed himself. He said, I came here. I, 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 I put myself into that position. I remove all the glory and the power that you bestowed on me. And now I put myself and then you're full of authority and I rely on you. I trust on you for my daily bread. I trust on you for my provision. I will not touch any bread until you feed me. Because you are my father. Is God your father? Yes. He will take care of you. He will provide for you. He will protect you. Amen. He will keep you. Amen. That is his word. And that's the word of God. That's the faith that works. Amen. Faith that is based on the scripture. On the promise of God. You know, one thing the children of Israel did not understand. When God said, I will send you into the promised land. You see, there was something bigger than that physical geographic land. If you've been to Israel... Some of you have been nightly. It's a dry land. There is nothing there. But you know what he was sending them to? The first thing God wanted them to know, he was sending them into the land of his promise. Not the promised land, but the land of his promise. He wanted them to trust in his word first. 
And this place called the promised land could be anywhere in your life. And say it in Isaiah 44, you know, I would change the dry land, the parched land, into a place full of springs. Let's read that. Let's read that. Hallelujah. Let's read first forty one. Return two pages behind. He said in verse 17, the poor and the needy search for water, but there is none. Their tongue are parched with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make river flow in the barren day and spring within the valleys. I will turn the desert into a pool of water and the parched ground into spring. I will put in the desert the cheddar, the acacia, the meal, and the olive. I will do, I will, I will, I will. I will change the desert into a pool of water. What is your desert? The promise of God is what you need to carry. That's what's going to change your circumstances. Financial circumstances, marital circumstances. Speak the word of God. Speak his promise. <clears throat> He's leading them into the land of his promise before you discover <coughs> the promised land. Because only his promise, his promise will change things around for you. He's a God keeping covenant. What he says he will always do. And for a thousand generations, that's the word of God. That's where my belief and your belief lies on. The power of faith that leads you and fuel your Christian life is the power of the word of God. And the water is the symbol of the spirit in your life. The spirit of God gushing through your dryness, through your wilderness. Being led is a privilege. Amen. Coming to the point where you understand that you are absolutely nothing mm. and you trust him for your provision, it's a privilege. Amen. Because yes. then you will start seeing the hand of God in your life. Yeah. And your test will become your testimony. Amen. 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 That's God's plan for our life. The poor and the needy search for water, but there is none. Their tongue are parched with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make river flow on barren aid and spring within the valley. Isaiah 44, I didn't mention earlier. Verses 3. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty. Somebody saying, I believe it's true. You only deserve what you desire. You only deserve what you desire. When you are thirsty, you're really desperate for God. He will show himself. Are you desperate? How far do you want to go with your faith with God? I will pour water on who? Who is thirsty? Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who thirst for what? For righteousness. There is a blessing attached to your deeper desire to see God's righteousness fulfilled in your life. What is God's righteousness? When you're not working and you need a job, this is no righteousness. This is not right. God wants to correct every injustice in your life. Amen. He doesn't want you to beg for your food. That's not right. Look around you. That sun, that 
those that have been struggling, for whom you've been praying for so many years, who's wandering around. He's not right. Call upon his justice. Call upon his name. Ask for his will to be done. His righteousness to come to pass in the life of your family and your children. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness, who thirst for righteousness. I will pull my spirit yes, on the one who is thirsty and stream on the dry ground. I will pull my spirit on your offspring and my blessing mm. on your seed. I will pour water. He's the God of the wilderness. He's the God who loves to reveal himself. But first, and I'm going to close there, you're going to realize that you need to trust in his faithfulness. Trust in his faithfulness. Get your eyes off man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we betray you with a backstab, you with a waving, you can't even do it. <laughs> Doesn't mean everybody is bad. But until you realize that, you're going to have to learn. <laughs> and sometimes the hard way. <laughs> Keep your eyes off, man. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord. I just came up, uh, I think it's Psalm 55. Let's read that. Sorry. Just to qualify what I just said. You know, Psalm 55, verses 22, and Psalm 56, verses 3. 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Mm. Who doesn't have cares or worries or concerns? We all have. But the command here is to cast them on the Lord. And he will do what? He will sustain you. Mm -hmm. He will never, mm -hmm. never let the righteous be shaken. Yeah. If God is shaking you, the only thing you're going to lose is your pride. It's, true. <laughs> it's the foolish idea of how wonderful you think you are. Yeah. 56 verses 3. When I am afraid, mm. I put my trust in you. Oh, in God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and I'm not afraid. <coughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm not the person. Hallelujah. Praise God. What can a man do to me? Oh, yes. Yes. You're going to discover that. When I'm afraid, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. Mm -hmm. Do you praise the word of God? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says it's impossible to please God unless you have faith. Yes. You can't please Him if you don't trust Him. You can't. If you want God's favor and approval, you need faith in His word. Amen. In God, I trust and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortal do to me? Someone is walking, his leg is not even equal. You know your legs are not equal. Our legs are not equal. If you stretch your legs like that, you will realize that sometimes there are few inches. Sometimes the right is slightly longer than the left. Even your legs are not equal. You can't walk straight. And why would you trust somebody who can't walk straight? <laughs> oh, <laughs> David has to experience that. That was David's experience. 
Let me read that last verse and I will conclude very soon. That's the first time I'm saying I'm, I'm concluding. <laughs> I've learned that from Pastor. Hosea. <laughs> <laughs> Hosea chapter 2, verses 14. Now you see God through the scripture revealing why he did what he did. Why sometimes he loves to drive you into that dry, parched place where you have no support around you. In that empty place where you feel isolated. And that's what he said about Israel. Therefore, I'm going to allure her. I will lead her into the wilderness. And then I will speak tenderly to her. Another translation said, and then I will reconcile. In the wilderness, I will reconcile her with me. It's a place of reconciliation. It's a place where you discover yourself and you discover your purpose. You discover who God is and you discover his plan for your life and you discover God himself. I will allure her. I will lead her purposely into the wilderness. And there I will speak tenderly. I will speak kindly to her. In the wilderness, it's all empty. You stop listening to the noises around you. Too many voices. Too many advisors. Too many counselors. Then I will give her back the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Where? In that right place? Yes. Yes. Is there your promise to be fulfilled? I will give her back a vineyard. I will make the valley of Echo a door of hope. There she will respond as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came up out of Egypt. In that day, declared the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. You see, God is not the master. He's a father. He's an husband who protects you, who covers you with the shadow of his wing. Then he said, when I walk in the shadow in the valley of the shadow of death. It's only the shadow, it's not a real thing. I fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. You are with me. Do you know God is with you? He wants to walk with you. He wants to reconcile with you. He wants to show you something about yourself that you do not know. He wants you to bring you to that place where he will give you back your vineyard. He will restore hope for you. I will change the valley of ego into a door of hope. That's his promise. That's the word of God. Shall we pray? Mm -hmm. <coughs> The word of God is always an invitation to move forward, to grow, to bear fruit, to be transformed, to be changed. God is inviting you to humble yourself and to know that your hard time does not mean it's the end of you. God is with you. Even in the shadow of death. In the midst of your sickness. He says, I am the Lord that he led. He gave strength to your body. Strength to your bones. He gives you hope again. He provides for your needs. And the needs of your children. 
and their children and their children. I will pour out my spirit over your sin, my blessing over your descendants. <laughs> I'm glad you came this morning. Father God, I thank you that your spirit is poured to refresh someone this morning. 